Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. Okay, let's get right to it. Um, Good to have everyone here uh, this evening as we study another portion of God's Word. Uh, and don't forget, we remember the series we're looking at uh, the Bible, of course, where the God says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. So we're looking at how he works. And we need to do that because, remember, he is our enemy. And his objective is to, he's already lost, he's already gone. He knows that um, he's going to be cast in eternal damnation at the end of time. And so what he's doing is is trying to influence the best way he can for people to leave the place where salvation is, that's the kingdom. Now, we saw that in Revelation chapter 12, uh, the kingdom uh, did come. He tried to stop that. It didn't happen. He was not successful. Uh, and we saw that the, the plan, when you look at it metaphorically and the imagery, the plan was from the heavenly realm. And so the kingdom came from the mind of God. And so Satan did not stop that plan. And now his, since the kingdom is here, which means salvation is here, we saw that. So what's his objective now is to try to destroy uh, anyone that's in the kingdom. So if you're in the kingdom, then he's doing whatever he can uh, to uh, convince people to come out of there. Now, remember, we talked about that. Satan is a spiritual being. He's not God. He's not omnipotent, all-powerful. He's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. Uh, that's why in First Peter 5, chapter 5, verse, he's seeking the opportunity, seeking whom he may devour. So he's looking for an opportunity uh, to convince you and influence you through someone else uh, to leave the place where salvation is. Turn to chapter 12, verse 17 quickly, Revelation chapter 12. So I want you to understand that. Uh, whatever he can do. Now, remember, we talked about that. In this case, it was Domitian, the 11th emperor. Of course, Daniel chapter 7. Uh, you see how it all ties in together. Uh, Daniel looked to Revelation. Revelation looked back to Daniel. Um, the 11th emperor was Domitian. He's number 8 in the book of Revelation. We talked about that. But it's Domitian. In chapter 13, we looked at that. Um, that's the first part of the Roman Empire, the political Rome. And the verse 11 and following, I believe that's emperor worship. So it all ties in together. Now, I was doing some reading today. I'm doing more reading on the Roman Empire. I'm not going to go into it, but it's very, very interesting, which I need to do more. But it, it's interesting how it correlates with the scriptures. And Domitian and the and Nero, the uh, Vespasian, Titus, all those other, Ortho, those other, uh, those other ones who were of the eleven. So it's very interesting. Once I get all together, I'm going to present it. I want you to see here, um, remember we talked about how Satan utilized this emperor. Uh, in his mind, he wanted to be deified, to be a god. And I read something earlier today uh, about the Roman emperors and how they would uh, uh, be deified after death. And it was interesting that, uh, but Domitian changed it. He was going to be deified uh, <laughs> during his life while he was living. So very interesting. But anyway, Satan uh, took advantage of him. Remember, Satan takes an opportunity, and, and out of all the emperors, uh, this was an opportunity for Satan to destroy the saints, uh, to influence them through Rome, to come out of uh, this system of worship to follow another worship okay so we're talking about and remember i want you to get this the christians uh, were uh, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of god and so they knew the scriptures studied the scriptures etc experienced the problems of god but the roman empire was in existence domitian was in existence so that was all tangible they they were saying tangible things so it was a lot of influence there and rome did seem very powerful and uh, there was a time when they were very powerful. And so I want you to see the temptation and then also the persecution that 
I went on in Asian mining, et cetera. So there's a lot of uh, ways to influence uh, Christians to come out of the place where salvation is. So remember in chapter 12, verse 17, uh, and the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. That is the objective. I want you to grasp that, what he said in verse 17. Remember, he tried to stop the plan of salvation. It didn't work, okay? And we see in verse 7 and following verse 7 and 8 and 9, the war in heaven. Well, that's we talked about that before. That's not literally a war. But he did not halt that plan of God. The plan is heavenly plan. It's a heavenly plan. Was it? Was it? Was that? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, thy, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on, on earth as is in heaven. So the plan to save mankind, which involves the kingdom, came from the heavenly realm. So Satan did not stop that. God's plan did happen. It came into fruition. We see it in Acts two. So now remember, that's us. He's trying to, uh, he's trying to influence the people who are in the church. You see that in Revelation, you see that, you know, different verses and scriptures, uh, you know, what people went through. So that's what he's doing. He's doing that today. Whatever he can do to influence anyone to leave the kingdom, then he, he completes his task. That's what he wants to do. Remember, he's lost and he's trying to convince those to go with him. That's all it is. That's what he's trying to do. So whatever it is, whatever it is to tempt a man or a woman, anyone to leave the kingdom of God, it could be pain and suffering. It could be ridicule. It could be stress, whatever it is. It can come through somebody else and say, well, he can't do that. It's just it's like people can frustrate you so much when you start uh, discrediting the kingdom of God. Well, it could be some type of um, maybe some type of uh, some morality or something you want to do and, and the freedom that you feel like you should have and it's not in the kingdom. And so you leave the kingdom just to do other things. It's, it's those things tempt you to come out. And, and so remember those verses that we talk about a lot. First, John chapter 2, verse 24, stick to what you learned from the beginning. That's a strong verse. First Corinthians 4, 6, do not think beyond what is written. Strong verse. <clears throat> so remember that. Now, remember we also talked about in verse 11, we looked at uh, verse 11 and 12 and we notice he said, and I saw another beast, and I and I'm inclined to believe, and I believe that's the Rome, that's the emperor. Remember, Domitian is nothing without Rome. The reason why Domitian is so powerful is because he's the emperor of Rome, which includes the military, etc. So that makes him powerful. Okay, so it, it's they work together. So the other beast, you see, the, the the emperor worship. I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and and he spoke as a dragon. Now we talked about that last week. It's like a a wolf in sheep's clothing. I believe it's Matthew seven fifteen. Don't quote me on that. I think I'm right. Um, so that's that's the idea. But we also talked about. I want you to see this. You notice that I saw another beast, and we know from chapter thirteen, the book of Daniel, etc. That's Rome. That's the fourth kingdom. The other beast, the, Rome, the the emperor of Rome, had two horns. We talked about. It. He's mimicking the lamb. He's mimicking the lamb which is Christ, because the lamb is where salvation is. So he's mimicking the lamb. I want you to he's mimicking the lamb. He has two horns. And so uh, it's not seven horns. He's not, you know, that's, you see, that I believe that's lesser than seven, but still he's mimicking the lamb. And I want you, I want you to understand as I read that again. And I saw another beast coming out of the earth and it had two horns like a lamb. It's not the lamb, but he's mimicking the lamb. And he spoke as a dragon. So Satan is behind the scenes. I want you to understand that. I want us to grasp that. Satan is behind the scenes. Whatever opportunity he can take to cause a person to leave the church or become unfaithful, he's going to do that. And 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 mo it's a lot of times a temptation, and and sometimes it can come from someone else. Okay, but that's what he does. So whatever opportunity he can take, he's taking it. So I wanted to see that. And so this is a, remember we talked about last week, it's a religious matter. It's a religious matter. Okay, it's a religious matter. And and so what is he doing? When you are an emperor and you deify yourself, you decide you're going to be God, of course there's worship involved. 
and I studied that there was some worship involved, sacrifice involved in the simple worship. And so what happens, that's against God, it's God's will. You don't, we don't worship anyone but God. So now Satan knows the consequences of worshiping incorrectly. I want you to grasp that. So I want you to get the step. But you see God now. Remember, this is free will. Domitian, it's like Vespasian, his father. I forget the, the date he ran. I think it was in the 80s, 70s or 80s BC. And then Titus, he dies. And Titus, uh, I think, lived two years. And I think he died of natural causes. And then come here's Domitian. Domitian. The perfect one for Satan to utilize. Also, Nero was rough on Christians. Also, Nero was rough on Christians. Also, just the mission took it to another level. So, I want you to see how that works. So, here's Rome looking all powerful. I think at one time, Rome was burnt, and, and I think Domitian had something to do with building it up against sort of Nero, etc. So, you know, Rome was all powerful and, and, and great military conquering a, a, a huge part of the world. Very political. Many nations follow their own political power. And so, see the tangible. So, here comes Domitian. And many people uh, believed in that fake system, and but the Christian didn't. And, and the men were forced to, uh, you know, worship the image, you see. And so, who's behind the scene? It's Satan trying to, Satan, the emperor, you worship. The emperor, you worship. You see it in the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, the image, worship the image. The Jews, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and the ben, and the, uh, I think the Abednego, <laughs> um, they could not worship the image. And you know what happened? Daniel could not worship an image. Because they'd done that, that would be going against the worship of God. There's only one God, one true God that you worship. You know, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Godhead. So Daniel could not do that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could not do that. But you see, the, I want you uh, before I go on, I want you to grasp it because it's important. Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, I believe it's Daniel chapter three, he started that. It was his idea. The Babylonian Empire ruled a high, high percentage of the world. So now you build this image and you worship the image. What you're doing, you 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 can't worship God and worship the image, it's a sin against God. And the way to sin is death. So watch this. Okay, so I want you to understand that Satan knows the consequences for worshiping God incorrectly. I'm going to say that again. Satan knows the consequences for worshiping God incorrectly. And I'm saying that because even though many of us may take it lightly, and I believe that freedom, that freedom thought, that thought of liberty comes from Rome also, which that's another uh, lesson. So people feel like they're free and they don't take... Uh, things seriously, take, they take things lightly. But Satan knows those things are not to be taken lightly, even though we take them things lightly. Uh, you don't interfere, you don't uh, tamper with the worship of God. And the Bible is going to teach us that. So watch this. Now, remember when I said it's a religious matter and he's trying to mimic the Lamb. We saw that last week. And for those who are listening for the first time, I advise you to go back to last Wednesday lesson. So let's look at uh, chapter 14 of Revelation. Now watch this. Chapter 14, let's skip to verse 9. And I saw another angel, a third one, followed them, saying, who was with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast, see, watch. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or upon his hand, uh, he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is in the mix and full strength in the cup of his anger. Uh, and he will be tor tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. There's the lamb. Now notice in the presence of the lamb, that's the true lamb. But in verse 11, you see, and I saw another, uh, that's chapter 13, verse 11. I saw another beast come up of the, of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb. And he spoke of the dragon. That's mimicking the lamb we're reading here. That's what salvation is. But here's the consequences of, of worshiping God incorrectly. The Bible says, again, if you if you do this, 
You see, you see the word in verse nine. See the word worship in verse nine. And, and another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud, with a loud voice, making it very clear: If anyone worships the beast, okay, what's going to happen? If anyone worships the beast and his and his image, and receives a mark on his hand or his forehead, and I, and I, I'll go back and get to that, but that, I believe that did happen. Where that was the, you know, that that, it, it, you know. They could buy and sell if they didn't worship this image and, and i got to go back into it and i think if they didn't have this mark then that indicated they in other words they had difficulty making a living buying and selling etc but i'm going to go big i read that i want i want to go a little deeper into that just to make sure but i believe i'm correct on that but i want to see here that the worship if you do this uh look at verse 10 he also will drink the wine of wrath of god of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. See that? And he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of his holy angels, holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke, watch this, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, for they rest, for they may, uh, that they may rest from their labors and their deeds follow them. See the saints? Now watch. Look at the word worship. Now, if you go back to chapter 12, hold your spot there. So the, God makes a plain yeah, anybody, anyone who worships the beast will be tormented in fire and brimstone. Uh, he, anyone who worships the beast um, will suffer the wrath of God. In verse 11, the smoke and, and will be tormented. What the, tor the torment goes up forever and ever. And they have no rest day and night. Now watch. So watch this. Look at Satan. Watch this. So you have Domitian, who is in another world. And he... He was killed. He was murdered. And I believe he was stabbed. Eventually he was stabbed to death. I think it was in his 40s. So he did, you know, he was, they, they really didn't even want to remember his name, the damage he caused. Um, but you have Domitian, who's influential. You, you have Domitian, who's influential, has a power to influence. You have Satan behind that. And then you have, look, now watch this. Watch, watch what I'm going with this. Chapter 13, you have the people being fooled in verse 4. Watch this. And they worshiped the dragon because he gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast and who was able to wage war with him? See? Look at verse 8. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb who has been slain. See? That's the lamb. Remember, he's mimicking the lamb. That's the lamb, the true lamb. That's what salvation is. That's Christ. That's what salvation is. But I want you to see this. You worship the beast. In chapter 13, you're fooled. See, you're fooled. Um, look at verse 14 of chapter 13. And he deceived those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it, it was given to him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And there was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast might even speak and cause many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all the small and great and the rich and poor and the free men and slaves to be given a mark on their right hand, on their forehead. So you read, so you read on, you see. You see how they're fooled, the influence, one influence is another, but Satan's behind the scenes. Domitian doesn't know Satan's behind the scenes. God does. God does. Domitian has one objective, Satan has another. What do you think Domitian is right now? Domitian is not, he wasn't a Christian, he did his damage. Uh, and, and when I judge according to the scriptures, then Domitian is not in the paradise. He's in uh, um, the Hadean realm, Tartarus, where he transferred into eternal damnation. For eternity, he's gone. So Satan won that battle. Because now we just, now watch what I'm telling you. I want you to understand this, how serious about Satan knows the consequences of worship. 
we saw what's going to happen if, if the people worship the beast. Okay? And in their mind, they were doing a thing, you know, worship the beast, be have peace, who's able to make war with the beast, the Rome, etc. But God said, I'm going to read this again before I go to this other verse. Go back to chapter 14. Now watch, I have to read this again, verse 9. And another angel, verse 9, and another angel, a third one, followed them, saying, with a loud voice, if any of them worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead and upon his hand, he who he also will drink of the wine of wrath of God, of the wrath of God, see, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, see, and the smoke of their torments goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image and whoever received the mark uh, of his name the beast is going to be destroyed but I think it goes beyond that now watch this so you see what's going to happen to uh, the people who do that who <clears throat> allow Satan to influence them through someone else they're doomed now watch this look at chapter 20 and verse 10 chapter 20 verse 10 And the devil who deceived them was thrown into lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay. That's, see, that's his doom. That's where he's going. He knows that. We talked about that. Satan knows he's doomed. Angelic beings, spiritual beings cannot repent. And, and that's proven. We talked about that. He's doomed. His objective is, is to influence whoever he can. Salvation is in one place. That's the kingdom. It's hard for people to understand that because the world has people confused. It's hard to them to understand that. Like the Ephesians 4, 4, there's one body. Uh, Ephesians 5, 23, 22, 23, uh, Christ is saved with that body. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, the body is the church. It's, it, it's hard for people to understand that because of the, it's so many, I think it's 4,000 something religions going on today. See, that's where, but there is, there's, Satan is, is picking on that one. Now, it's very interesting, and I, I like you all, whoever's listening, to do a study because when, remember, when this existed, a lot of these other religions, they were not even existent during this time, okay? So that goes back to who Satan was picking on. That's the kingdom of God that started in Acts chapter 2, okay? Because that's what salvation is in Revelation chapter 12, uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. So let's see what he's doing here. So I want you to see this. So look how sneaky he is. So you have Rome who deceived the people. Uh, Domitian was killed. He was stabbed. I forgot how many times. So he was fooled by Satan. He lost. And and notice what happens when Satan stone into lake of fire and brimstone. So were the false prophets. See, and the false prophets also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever in chapter 20 and verse 8 but the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the moral persons and sorcerers and all idolatry and all lies they will their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone which is a second death okay so i want you to see that that he knows the consequences even though People may take things lightly, and I have to say this because we're going to eventually we're going to go to some, we're going to narrow it down to what God requires, and 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 I want you to see we have to narrow things down for us to get the point. But Satan, I want you to understand that Satan knows the consequences for tampering with God's worship. Sometimes because of we don't want to accept it, we take things lightly. Satan doesn't. So a person can be worshiping God incorrectly and be just as happy and think they're right with God. And Satan knows that's not true. So a person could be, it's like we could be walking dead and don't even know Satan has us. It's because we're not following what the commandments of God say. And that's what happened to them. I, I wanted you to see that because they followed this false teaching. They worshiped an image. They sin against God. The wage of sin is death. That's spiritual death. Be separated God, separated from God. So they'll be transferred into hell for eternity. 
so they were deceived. See, the Bible says Satan who deceived the whole world, the dragon who deceived the whole world, they were deceived. <laughs> They're going where he's going. That's all he wants. People have to understand that's all he wants. He's already going there. He's doing whatever he can to convince people to go there. That's all he wants. Now watch. Look at chapter 9. And we're going to get out of Revelation in a minute. I want to go to chapter 9. I want to you to see that Satan knows the consequences for breaking God's, for worshiping God incorrectly. Look at chapter 9. And verse 18. And a third of mankind was killed by these three plagues, by the fire and smoke and brimstone, which proceed out of their mouth, for the power of the horses in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents and their heads, and with them <clears throat> they do harm. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold and silver and brass and stone or wood, which can neither uh, see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, uh, their sorcerers, nor of their immorality, nor their theft. So a lot of these things like sorceries, immorality, things like that, that ties into the uh, worshiping, the false worshiping. But notice what God is doing here in this, in this one, uh, in verse eight, a third of mankind. So God is giving him, he's doing things providentially there's punishment involved place coming to existence to convince to influence people to repent so god is still you know satan is doing whatever he can to influence and god is is, is influencing people to repent and 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 believe me that uh, a lot of times majority of the time i believe that comes from the, the high pain and suffering a lot of times people don't wake up until they suffer severely and some people really don't i'm thinking about the king i forget his name who was diseased in his feet and it was so stubborn, uh, he died like that. He went to a physician instead of going to God. He disobeyed God and he had a disease, but he kept going to positions. And so you see here that this persecution, this plague that God brings to mankind, this Roman area, is to convince people to repent because uh, many are worshiping the beast and God still desires their soul. But instead of this group repenting, uh, Bible says they did not repent of their murders and their sorceries. But notice, um, verse 20, and the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues, see, some were killed, did not repent of their works of their hands so as not to worship demons. So it goes back to worship. Goes back to worship. You see what Satan caused? He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Okay, think about this. So now you have people, it's serious, they're worshiping false gods. They're worshiping wrong. And God brings forth a plague while they're on earth. And because of that plague, many are killed. And the ones who are living instead of repenting, they still they are still doing those things. Satan is getting what he wants. He's already doomed. And so if they did not repent, the Bible says, and they did not repent of their murders, their sorceries, and of their immorality, nor of their, th their thefts, that means they lost their soul. See? I want you to grasp this. Satan knows, and we know, that we have to have authority to worship God. I want to say that again. They did not have authority to do what they did. They were fooled. Okay? The saints who stuck to God's worship and did not do that, of course, many suffered. The ones who decided to go that way, they suffered from God. God punished them, and their suffering is, is eternal. Even the plagues were severe. God was trying to convince them to repent, to come back and worship him, but they did not do that. So you see where the punishment lies. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it was it's, it's like that's, their soul is gone. I want you, and I know I'm emphasizing this because I want you to understand how this is a serious matter. We, Satan knows that we, they had no authority to do what they did. They had no, and God is wanting the kingdom here, the people to stay faithful. When he says, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life, he's wanting them. 
Look at chapter 3 and verse 21 of Revelation. Now I'm going to get out of it. But I want you to see this, chapter 3 and verse 21. He says, he who overcomes, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So if you don't overcome, you're not going to sit on the throne. That's why in Revelation chapter, I believe it's 21, uh, they are reigning with Christ. Let me go there quickly. I'm not going to stay there. I just want to believe it's 21 or 20. Chapter 20, they are reigning with Christ. That means they were faithful. They were faithful, even in the midst of death. And now they're reigning with Christ. Okay. I want you to turn to, I want someone to, this is what I, I'm asking someone to get to John 14, 26. Uh, John 16, 13. Okay. So John 14, 26 and, and John 16, 13. And I'm going to read uh, Colossians, uh, Colossians 3, 17. Now, remember what, what we talked about. We have to have authority when it pertains to worshiping God. You just don't worship God any kind of way. It just, you know, it's, Satan knows that. Let me turn to, let me find Colossians. Um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And watch. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to him, to God the Father. So whatever you do, he's talking to the church here, church in Colossae. They're Colossians, they live in Colossae. So he said, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to him, to God the Father. So what he's saying, in the name of, uh, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. That's by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch, go to Acts chapter, let's go to Acts chapter 4 and verse 7. So that's talking about by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have to have authority. Whatever you do, you have to have authority. See, whatever I do, I have to, you know, when it pertains to worship, I have to have authority. Even when it comes to doing things in my body, I have to have authority from the scriptures. That's why people who, who involve themselves in, in all kinds of uh, immorality, Reason it's sin because they don't have authority from the scriptures. That's some scripture doing things that, are, that they're doing whatever they want to do. It's the same thing with worship. I have to have authority to worship God according to, uh, to satisfy him. And so look at, I like this, look at chapter, Acts chapter 4. Notice what this uh, authority is. Acts chapter 4. I'm going to read, um, let me read verse one real quick. And they were speaking and the, they were speaking to the people, the priests, uh, the temple and, and the captain of the temple guards and the Sadducees came upon them being greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people proclaiming in the G claiming in Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail. That's the disciples. And until the next day, for it was already evening. Many of those who had heard the message believed, and a number of the men came, about 5,000. And it came about on the next day that the rulers and the elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. And as the high priest was there in Caiaphas, the, uh, and John, and Alexander, and all the who were of highly priestly descent. And when they placed them in the center, they began to inquire, what power or by what name have you done this? So they're saying, by what authority are you doing this? OK. And so Peter explains him about what authority in verse um, 19. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to to you uh, than, rather than God, you be the judge. So in the name of Jesus Christ is by the authority of Jesus Christ. So by, by what says it is about what power, by what authority? Or in what, in what name have you done this? Who gives you that authority? And he lets them know where his authority came from. So I like that he lets them know where his authority came from. Now let's look at, now watch this. Now, I hope someone has John 14, 26 and 16, uh, 13. Let's see where his authority came from. 
Now, let's go to Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 1. I'm going to show you. Now, remember, we know the scriptures. Uh, Peter, look in chapter 1, uh, verse 13. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were stay, staying. That is Peter, John, etc. You see, Peter's there and the other disciples, etc. I'm showing you where you got authority from. Look at chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all with one together in one place. And suddenly they came from heaven, a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they appeared to them as a fire distributing them themselves and uh, they rested on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. That's where it gets it started from. So remember uh, in Mark chapter 9 and verse 1 the kingdom will come with power. Luke chapter 24 you see in Acts chapter 1 Jesus tells them to go to Jerusalem. You see in Acts chapter 2 they're in Jerusalem and, and, he, and he says and look at uh, chapter 1 and verse 5 he tells them, he said, look at verse 4 of chapter 1, and gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for uh, what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard uh, uh, from me. John was baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In verse 12 of chapter 1, then they returned to Jerusalem. So they are in Jerusalem. That's why in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost had come, you see what happened. And remember, the kingdom will come with power. And this is the power. In Mark chapter 9, verse 1, the kingdom will come with power. Jesus said, many many of you will live to see the kingdom come. He's talking about in Mark chapter 9, verse 1. And many people lived during this time to see the kingdom had arrived. So the kingdom is here. And you know, the Holy Spirit came upon them. That's where they received their authority. You see? Now watch. If you go to... Um, uh, and it let's stay in the book of Acts and you and let's go to it. It says in verse 42 of Acts chapter 2, and they continually they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking bread and to prayer. And that's where they got their authority. Now, watch. So, see the Holy now. What is now? Watch this. What does uh, John 14 26 say in John 16 13? Please, someone. John 14 and verse 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and to bring you remembrance all that I said to you. Hey, what is, thank you, what does 1613 say? I'll take it. It uh, says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. Now, you get into that text, and John is ta obviously talking to the disciples. So I want you to see what Peter received, as a, where, you know, when he said, what authority, what power? Well, it's by Jesus Christ. It's by the Holy Spirit. So he was doing what he was, whatever, what he was doing was by the authority of the Lord. He just wasn't doing it. These are the apostles. These are the apostles. And so Peter had authority. We have to have authority which comes from the Holy Spirit. He gave it to the apostles and the apostles gave it to us. Now in Ephesians chapter three, verse three and four, I'm gonna read that. Now I want you to listen to this. This is Paul talking, he was an apostle, that by revelation, see, he was, the Holy Spirit revealed it to him. There was made known to me the mystery. These were things that were hidden, but revealed to him. When he, when he received those things that were revealed, he wrote them down, as I wrote before in brief. And he said, by referring, by and by referring to this when you read you can understand my insight into the mystery into the mystery of christ so he's saying i received it and i'm going to write it down when you read it you understand it that's what he's saying and now you go back to colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 he says whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus christ we have to have authority to worship god we have to have authority that's when they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, that was authority given by the Holy Spirit. They were doing what God required them to do, uh, which came from the Holy Spirit. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, or rather chapter 2. 
First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. I love this one. Look at verse eleven. First Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. See, now we receive, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. Okay? So, <laughs> God's word we have to have authority to do whatever we are going to do in life. Uh, we're talking about worship. We have to have authority to do that. We just don't do that. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13, we talked about that. Or rather 23. These are matters which have, to be sure, the appearance of wisdom in self-made religion. Self-made religion is a person who basically... It's a presumptuous person, their attitude, they just do things without authority. That's arrogance. And that's a self-made religion. That's a religion of men. So therefore, since he talks about self-made religion, there, there has to be self-made religion. There has to be a religion of God. You see, and so a self-made religion is someone that does not have authority from the scriptures to do what they're doing. And remember, that's a sin against God, and we'll look at that. Look at, let's close with John 4. I want you to look at John 4. John 4 and 19. John 4, 19. It's like just talking about the woman at the well. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to skip over everything. Let's go to verse 19. The woman said to him, talking to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in the, this mountain. Let me check the time. Our fathers worship in this mountain. You people say that in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. See? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem shall you worship the Father. Now watch this. He said, You worship that which you know not. See? That implies it's possible to be in a false worship. You worship that which you know not. We worship that which we know for salvation of the Jews. So there's a true worship, there's a false worship, and a true worship. He's telling her, you worship that which you do not know. We worship that which we know. So It doesn't, listen, Satan knows that to worship God, we have to have authority. And I'm going to show you the next time we get into this, I'm going to show you, show you some more things. Even the old covenant, they had authority to worship God the way they worshiped God. I'm going to say it again. In the old covenant, they had authority to worship God the way they worshiped God. They just did not. If they worshiped God without authority, they were punished. And in some instances, they were punished severely, even die. I don't understand where we got this concept where we don't have to have authority. People just do what they want to do. And, I'm, and eventually I get into that thought, that thought process, that thought even comes from the Roman Empire. Okay. Next week, I'm going to, I want to start at the, well, uh, Jeremiah, before we go down, we're going to read John, Joshua 24 and verse 14. Joshua 24 and verse 14. I'm going to finish reading verse, look at verse 23. But an hour is coming, now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshippers. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See that? So the hour is coming. He's telling the new covenant. Now is when the true worshippers, see, there's a true, there's a true worshipper, one who follows the truth shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What did John, uh, Joshua 24, 14 say, Jeremiah? Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the, the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. See, that's what he's talking about. Just like Joshua said in Joshua 24, 14, same thing. God is the spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
Now, I have to. I'm sorry. Let me let me close out with this to show the consequence. Let's close out definitely with Matthew seven, Matthew seven, uh, uh, twenty one, and we're going to close with this one. Matthew seven, twenty one. Matthew seven twenty one. Now I want you to grasp this, and we'll start from here next week. I want you to grasp this. This is Jesus giving us a glimpse into the judgment day. People who knew him, people who considered them saints, considered themselves Christian saints. He says, "But I will say, verse twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven." But he that does the will of my father in heaven. That's the point. Who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did in your name, see, that's by that they didn't have authority. So did we listen, in your name, uh, by your authority, did we not prophesy by your authority, uh, cast out demons by your authority? I'm saying it, you know, in your name, by your authority, perform many miracles. Then he said, Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Uh, depart from me. Uh, you who practice lawlessness. But I want you to see, these are people, I want you to understand something here. The seriousness of authority. These were people who considered themselves to be faithful to God, faithful to Jesus Christ. They're debating with him. Wait a minute, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? So they so they spent their time on earth being faithful to God. And he turns around and says, I never knew you. Because they didn't have authority to do what they did. They did what they wanted to do. And they wasted that time on earth. It's important to have, it's, I'm telling you, it's detrimental to our souls not to have authority. I like in, in Luke chapter 12 and verse 47. And that slave who knows his master's will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will shall receive many lashes. They didn't do things according to God's will. And now they're going to suffer eternal, eternally in, in, in eternal damnation. Satan knows the importance of having authority. Satan knows the consequences for worshiping God incorrectly. And we need to understand that. This is a serious matter. God's worship is extremely serious. And people who worship him incorrectly, involve themselves in self-made religion, it's not according to God's will. If anyone needs prayers, please come. Please, please let it be known as we sing the song for the invitation.